Good evening, I'm Shogun Mohammed and this is the 7 o'clock news. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at the Libya Palace the United Arab Emirates Minister of Tolerance, Sheikh Nahyan bin Mbarak Al Nahyan, who visited His Royal Highness to convey the greetings and appreciation of the Emirati leadership and their wishes of abundant health and happiness to the Prime Minister. During the meeting, the minister conveyed the congratulations of the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the well-being of His Royal Highness, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless His Royal Highness with abundant health and happiness. He affirmed the UAE's leadership and people's appreciation of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister. His Royal Highness hailed the deep-rooted historic brotherly relations between the two countries and its exemplary model of cooperation in various fields. The Prime Minister asked the Minister to convey his greetings to the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, hailing the UAE's support to the Kingdom. The meeting reviewed the course of bilateral relations and the development of joint cooperation in various fields that serve the interests of both countries and achieve further progress and prosperity. The Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, witnessed part of the Hamad III joint exercise implemented by the BDF with the participation of a number of fighter jets and warships from the Egyptian Armed Forces. Upon the arrival of the Commander-in-Chief to Isa Air Base, he was received by the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, Commander of Royal Bahrain Air Force, Vice Marshal Sheikh Hamad bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, a number of senior officials in the BDF, and a delegation from the Egyptian Air Force participating in the exercise. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed was briefed on the objectives and stages of the aerial part of the exercise, the participating fighter jets, and the means of command and control. The BDF Commander-in-Chief welcomed the affiliates of the Egyptian Armed Forces and conveyed to them the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He also expressed thanks for their efforts in participating in the exercises various stages. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed also hailed the cooperation between the two armed forces evident throughout the implementation of the exercises various stages. 
he asserted the importance of holding joint exercises to develop military performance levels and contribute to gaining further expertise in planning defense operations in cooperation with brotherly and friendly countries. He added the exercise comes in line with the bilateral military cooperation to enhance and strengthen brotherly ties and support joint Arab action. The BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed thanks and pride in the exerted efforts and the high-level competency during the first stages of the exercise, which clearly reflects the advanced level of cooperation and coordination between the two armed forces. The Hamad III exercise continues where a stage was implemented by a number of fighter jets from Royal Bahrain Air Force and ships from Royal Bahrain Naval Force with the participation of fighter jets and ships from the Egyptian Armed Forces. The exercise included tactical training and maneuvers according to the President's plan aimed at developing operational readiness, exchange military expertise and enrich the command and combat performance of the participating air and naval weaponry to achieve the requirements of joint military action. The Representatives Council held its sixth session of the first regular session of the fifth legislative term, chaired by Council Speaker Fawzia Zainal. The Council approved a request to withdraw the report of the Finance and Economic Affairs Committee on a draft law amending some provisions of the law regarding the establishment and organization of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority for further study for another month. The Council also approved the request of the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee to withdraw the Committee's report on a draft law concerning the protection of society against terrorist acts. The Council approved the Services Committee's report concerning a bill amending an article on Social Security and forwarding it to the Shura Council. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, received today the Chairman and members of the Bahraini South Korean Parliamentary Friendship Committee. Zena stressed the importance of enhancing joint parliamentary cooperation with all councils and parliaments and supporting cooperation in various fields. She also hailed the depth of Bahraini-Korean relations and the kingdom's stance in combating terrorism, as well as the joint Bahraini-Korean understanding of the region's security and stability. The meeting discussed means of enhancing joint parliamentary cooperation between the two countries and the resulting joint projects and programs to upgrade bilateral relations, especially in the legislative and parliamentary fields, and coordinating stances in Asian and international parliamentary forums and meetings on issues of various con common concern. The South Korean parliament delegation praised Bahrain's reform project, democratic march and the civilization achievements under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the Kingdom's outstanding positions in supporting security, stability and comprehensive development. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh received the Chairman of the Bahraini South Korean Parliamentary Friendship Committee, Yong Hwan Lee, and the accompanying delegation. The work of the Shura Council and its role in the democratic process in the kingdom was reviewed, as well as the ongoing cooperation with the Representatives Council on one hand and with the government on the other, in addition to highlighting the unique diversity of Bahrain, which reflects the spirit of tolerance, coexistence, and openness enjoyed by the kingdom. As Saleh underscored the development of Bahraini South Korean relations are witnessing in various fields, noting the care these relations receive from the leadership of both countries, as well as the interest from the country's legislative and executive authorities. He affirmed the importance of conducting mutual visits between parliamentary delegations, citing its importance to further support the development of bilateral cooperation in the fields of trade and investment in a manner that serves the common interest of the two countries and their peoples. The president of the Interparliamentary Union, Gabriela Baron, visited Bahrain recently and talked about the enormous role the Kingdom of Bahrain had in shaping the current democratic movement in the region by being a role model of modernity and coexistence and an advocate to citizens' rights and requests. Furthermore, she explained in detail the essence of the bond between parliamentarians and the general population. It's not new for me to be working with parliamentarians from Bahrain. It has been a wonderful experience during many years. We started with a resolution 
First, we have to lobby together to get this resolution approved as, as an item, yeah. and then on the content. Yeah. So it was a complete year working together. It was a wonderful experience. I could witness uh, how uh, Bahraini parliamentarians are always willing to work together as a team in the same direction. They are supporting each other. So it was a, a, an amazing experience. Yes. Then, well, time goes on and now I am the president of the Interparliamentary Union. I had the Bahraini support, so I am also very thankful for that. And what can I say? During the last four days here in Bahrain, it has been an unbelievable experience yes. to see a country of tolerance, a country that is willing to be open, yes. to look for different approaches in society and to speak about it with absolute freedom. So that's, uh, I believe, one of the powerful messages that I have seen in Bahrain. And the other one, of course, is uh, FOSIA. Yeah. I am really happy, I tweet about it uh, uh, when it happened, to see uh, how women are being empowered in Bahrain because they want to, because they are strong, because they are uh, getting into campaigns and the people are voting for them. So that's the, the first step. But second, to have the first female speaker elected by uh, the, the, the parliament, that's a very powerful message. And, and I believe that as IPU, as a woman, as a, as a young parliamentarian, of course I am proud to see these results, yeah. but also I feel the, this uh, important uh, mandate to uh, use the Bahraini voice, the Bahraini example, yeah. also in the rest of the world. Yeah. The best way to translate these international agreements into local solutions are precisely the parliamentarians. Because even that the government is the one that negotiates those agreements, like the Paris Agreement, all the Sustainable yes. Development Agenda, etc., we need to approve, to ratify these instruments into the national parliaments. Mm -hmm. And then to change our national legislation, to put it into budget, and of course to ask the government for accountability and results. Yes. So that's the best link between a, a population that is plural, that is represented into parliament with these international instruments. The National Bureau for Taxation held a workshop on the treatment of VAT in the real estate sector, during which the NBT addressed all of the sector's VAT requires to ensure effective implementation of VAT. The workshop attracted 45 representatives from 35 registered real estate companies and recapped general VAT concepts and sector-specific VAT treatment and policies. During the workshop, the NBT affirmed its commitment to continue organizing workshops that increase public and private stakeholders' awareness regarding the treatment of the VAT across all sectors, in addition to advancing public-private cooperation. The Consumer Protection Directorate at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism held a number of shops and commercial markets for displaying the slogan of tax exemption for goods exempted from the VAT, which comes in line with the call of the National Bureau for Taxation for all registered shops and commercial establishments to display the slogan of tax exemption in a visible area for exempted goods in order to introduce them to the list of basic foods exempt from the VAT, which will contribute to the proper application. The directorate affirmed that the private sector is a key partner in raising awareness on the VAT by dealing directly with the consumer. The directorate also noted the need for all markets and shops to display the commercial registration that entitles them to the right to collect taxes for a visible place for consumers. Bahrain tops in the Global Internations Expat Insider Survey as the best place for expatriates for the second year in a row. According to the Expat Insider ranking as first overall, Bahrain is the standout performer, scoring first place among both male and female respondents, generally doing well across most topics. More in this report by Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. Bahrain leads the list of the best destinations for expatriates for the second year in a row, achieving the number one global ranking in the 2018 Internations Expat Insider Survey demonstrating high performance on factors such as ease of settling in, feeling at home, and digital life. These factors indicate that Bahrain remains an open society in transition to capitalize on a transformative ecosystem in which the companies of the future can excel and grow. I think expats here just love socializing and getting together. Bahrain's a good social place and it's, um, it, it has lots of different cultures. So it's nice to meet different people from different places, different backgrounds, and everyone's very friendly. 
So it's very easy to adapt into the lifestyle here. Um, it's very much like home and everyone makes it feel like home. The kingdom received particularly good ratings for working abroad and the ease of settling in, first in both categories, as well as family life. Seventh out of 50 countries, said Internations, the global information site for people who live and work abroad. Work is good here, yeah, there are plenty of opportunities and myself also got a good opportunity why I came here. Most important is that there is no discrimination between expats and locals here and experts get equal opportunities, so even uh, opportunities to grow are there. I'm originally from India, but I have lived in Bahrain for last 37 years. Beautiful Bahrain that is. The people are very hospitable and I'm blessed to have a beautiful job here. My two ch uh, children were born here, they have grown up here, they studied here, and this is really a beautiful place to be. It was the first time for me to live outside Egypt, but actually I was surprised because when I came here I found it like it's very easy to settle here and people were so warm and friendly with me. After five years I found like Bahrain is my second, really second home. I have a lot of friends now and I can say even more than friends, they are like my family now. I'm from Finland. I have been expat in eight different countries and now I live in Bahrain since eight months and I like Bahrain very much because here are so many different uh, kind of nationalities and cultures and I have a lot of friends, everybody here are very warm and nice and the weather is wonderful. Not only internations, in the 2018 HSBC Expat Explorer Survey, Bahrain takes the fifth spot in the world this year for expat satisfaction, also taking the lead as the top destination in the Middle East region, ranking first for expatriates to resettle and enjoy an exceptional quality of life. The kingdom received particularly good ratings across three major components, economics, experience and family. According to the International Global Survey, Bahrain has been chosen for the second year in a row as the best destination for expats to live and work in. We're here to speak with the International's people and know why they love Bahrain that much. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.